This week the guys continue building the Blackwater tanks for the engine room. They have to go in before the engine arrives. After having sized, cut out and joined the tanks, they get on with blasting the interior. They make it watertight and start building strength. They also measure the volume capacity, which we predicted was around 400 to 450 litres, but it wasn't that. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. Plan is this morning, lid off this one, get it to this stage. We're going to go around and glass everything. We've gone through, we've taken out all of the internal brackets. You can see there's nothing left on the inside holding it together. And the way that we've dealt with that, brackets on the outside. And then, uh, where's an example? Here we go. So we've screwed it together. There's screws on the underside, screws going in that way, etc. all the way around. So essentially what the plan is now is to go through and soak out this wood. And then we can start, yeah, getting in there and laying some glass. The resin we're using is just the no-name epoxy brand. It's sold over the road from us. Um, it's a five to one mix ratio that we use on this stuff. That's had a fairly decent coat and you can see there's a dry area there, a wet area there, dry there, wet, dry, etc. And basically it's the wood just sucking it up like a big sponge. This has had the same, this has had just bucket loads put on. See that bit's pretty much dry, that bit's dry, that bit's soaked. If it's dry so you just got to keep dousing it until no more will be absorbed now some people will say the end grain needs to be done it absolutely does but we're not going to bother with this end grain at the minute because we're going to be shaving the tops down to get them perfectly level they're not they're not absolutely bang on true to each other so you can sort of see here there's you know a height difference here that's going to be shaved off once we've got that bit sorted um, then we're going to go through and nuke it again on the end grains and so on when we're doing all of the glassing but for now we just need to get the, um, the epoxy basically completely buried deep into that plywood. So this has been maybe an hour or two and you can see bone dry areas and then sort of tacky sticky areas so it still hasn't fully soaked everything up, we have to just keep going. There's more there, there's like this is sort of shiny and this is dry. Some big dry areas through here. Yeah, press on, another coat. So we've gone through and we've done the second layer of epoxy into the tanks and it's just not soaking up epoxy like it was earlier. So what we're doing now is going through and cutting some tape. So 150 millimeter um, double directional tape. And then we're gonna put that in every corner. So vertical on all of these sort of vertical corners and joins and then horizontal down around the bottom of the tank including the front where it bolts on we're not doing the outside of the tank at this stage that's all going to come later um, you'll see why soon but we need to get this tape in so we can start getting the fairing compound mixed up and then get the coving in we're going to do a, a nice big radius on every single join on the inside of this tank and then we'll also start putting the baffles into the tanks as well but for now it's all about tape And after we push the air out, that's what the glass should be looking like. So we've got a layer in every vertical and horizontal corner except for this vertical just here and then a little bit across there. We ran out of tape, so we'll get some more tape and we're going to go fill that up. Um, and then we're on to the second tank over the back. Once that's set up, we'll have a, a bit of a look and decide if we want more tape to get more strength out of it. And if we do, we'll add just basically add another layer over top. Um, if we're happy with the amount of strength that we've got with that one layer of tape, then we'll start doing the solid layers of glass that start going in all of the wall sections. People sometimes wonder how strong these tanks are gonna be. Are they gonna hold up to the pressure that's inside them? So I wanna show you how strong this stuff is. Piece of plywood, it's a bit of offcut from the tank. It's got one layer of 450 GSM double bias glass with epoxy on one side, and it's just been epoxied on the other side. So I'm gonna do a test on this to show you how strong it actually is.
Okay, so, so I weigh 80 kgs and I can't get the glass to break. I did manage to get the wood to just disintegrate, but it's pretty unlikely that you're ever gonna see localized pressure like that on these tanks. They're gonna have you know, a vast area taking um, you know, weight that's spread out across that whole area. So these tanks with one layer of 450 GSM double bias are more than strong enough to hold up to what we're doing, but because it's brew pig, we're gonna over engineer it and throw a bit more glass at it. All the vacuum baggers out there in YouTube land are probably cringing at the amount of resin that's going into this. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay, these are not racing holding tanks. Sometimes you don't get the glass laid down perfectly flat. So it's not the end of the world if you've got a couple of creases like this because you can just gently get your brush and work them out. You just keep sort of ever so slowly pushing the glass out in the direction you want and eventually you can get most of those creases out. You won't get all of them out, but it's not the end of the world. You can come back later with a flapper and clean that up. That's us for the day. They come up pretty good, I thought. So first layer of tape in the corners on all tanks. Next step is once this is basically set up and dry, we'll start laying out the, the matting that we've got. We've got a double directional a 450 gram matting that we'll put in there and then start building our um, main glass structure up with that. The following day this stuff has beautifully gone off nice and it's nice and hard the um the tape is nicely buried we've got a bit of gap along this edge that's why it looks like there's air there there is air but it's not a problem because it's behind it's on it's on this side here it's come up really really awesome really happy it's incredibly rigid compared to what it was now what the next step is this 450 gram double directional we're going to cut it so that it basically lays out and will fill that whole bottom base and then we're going to start bulking things up with some chop strand around the top because it's a slight it doesn't quite reach all the way around the top at the back so we'll get some chop strand and we'll bulk that up and then we're going to repeat the process on this one here and get that done as well we can't add too much thickness to the outside of the tanks because then it won't physically fit in the boat where they're made to suit so the outside will be getting glass but it'll get one layer of a relatively thin glass and it's going to be feared so that it looks you know neat and lovely etc it's not really about strength on the outside it's mainly about just protection the inside is where we're going to be putting all of our effort to do all of the coving and do all of the, the bulking up of the glass to get the strength so when you tr go to clean this stuff up here just get a normal sort of like cutting knife and you can just slice you can make a butcher's job of it like that or you can do a neat job of it there you go cleans up pretty easy so we've gone through any areas where we want to give it a bit of a tidy up so like you can sort of see there's some bits here that have just been flattened down that's where the glass was sticking up a little bit high and it's just going to make the next layers more and more difficult if we have bumps and lumps like that so we've just gone through and just done any sort of bits that we weren't super happy with skim them around so that it's a nice smooth transition so when we put this next layer in which is going to be relatively stiff compared to the thin tape that we use we've just got an easier job of it that's pretty good isn't it? maybe you can put some on the wood before you this. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, great idea. Yeah. So you can pre-soak it, soak it from both sides. We're going to need both of these for this, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So we've got um, these as well. Mm, yeah, and we've got the roller. Tip that I didn't think we'd find today is when you're out of stirrers, the end of your old hard paintbrush works absolutely brilliantly. Here we go. 
second tank is glassed up. So we've gone through, you can see the, the double diagonal is pretty much on every surface now. We've got a layer, single layer on the bottom, and then we've got a single layer around the edges, and there's obviously a bit of overlap on quite a few of the edges. So it's getting stronger and stronger. We're going to start now doing the covings and everything on this tank, but we're going to let this one dry. This has got a, probably a good couple of hours before we can do anything on it. We'll make a start on the second tank. We haven't touched this one yet. We'll go through and do the double diagonal on this one as well. First tank glassed up. That's now nice and dry. It's all tacked up and set really, really well. Happy with that. It's very stiff, which is cool. Next step, do exactly the same thing on tank number two. So we're going to go through... We've got two different types of glass. We've got chop strand, which is this scratchy stuff here, and we've got diagonal, double diagonal woving here, which, yeah, awesome stuff to use, not scratchy, and is quite a solid thick layer for the, the bulk that we're after here. Step one is always putting the glass in dry, cutting it to size and everything to make sure we're gonna have an easy fit up when we go to put this in. And then step two is throwing a heap of resin in before we put the glass down. Same deal, let's use an edge to line it up on. So here you can see the two different tools that we use. The yellow spatula is great for just spreading out bulk amounts of epoxy and then you can get a brush to sort of get the corners and any bits that you can't get to with the yellow spatula. And then the little roller that I'm using is a bit like a paint roller but it's a metal roller that has grooves in it and essentially all it does is squash the glass down further into the resin so you can push the air mixture. If there's any air bubbles caught it lifts it to the surface and gets rid of it. Plan this morning, we've got them flipped over. We're gonna go through, get rid of all these lumps and bumps. Um, but then wherever there's an overhang, you can sort of see there's like quite an overhang just there. We're gonna slice that off, same deal on this back corner here. Get rid of all of that, and then get it to a stage where it's relatively flush like this one here. And then we'll round it over so that we can get a nice layer of glass over the whole thing. Areas like this where there's a bit of a gap, we'll basically just clean out so that we can fill it, fear it, and make it look pretty.
something we're incredibly grateful for. Unimig have come on board as a sponsor and they've given us a plasma cutter as well as a welder. This is an awesome set of kit that they've given us. As some of you may know, we're long time users of Unimig. We absolutely stand behind their equipment. So we're really stoked that they came on board as a sponsor and we love the fact that we can actually show what we can do with some good machines. That's pretty amazing. Look, you got like you can test the air, but you can do normal cutting or perforated cutting, and then internal or external air. So like internal compressor, or use the big compressor. You can do heavier metal, like thicker metal on external air. Oh, it's an adapter. <laughs> Fifteen amp, ten amp. So you can plug it in on the run it at lower power but you've got an adapter because normally it runs a 15 amp plug yeah. with a big earth socket see the difference between the two so you can plug that in like that and then plug that into a 10 amp and derate the machine a bit but you can still weld so a decent i think it's a binzel float yep decent big torch nice to use. it's the same as the other machine they're nice nice guns to use what's that argon regulator so there's two types of bottles that we use one needs a regulator so we'd use this and the other comes with a regulator but it, it's because it's at 300 bar rather than 200 bar this will be set for 200 bar so there you go 20,000 kpa so this this is really good for like tig welding tank and thing. so one thing i really love about the tig gun that i've been using so you've got your your on off button there you've got a gas control dial and then you've got a flexi head so you can put it into like weird positions it just makes it so much easier to weld I, I love having flexi heads, they make a world of difference. This weld is capable of stick welding, MIG welding, as well as AC and DC TIG, so you'll see a lot more of this. You better start moving and feel the music. Get your groove on and let it use you. When you feel the fire and you know it's right. So the plan on these tanks now, we need to go through and clean up where all this new glass is set and then go through all of these corners here and do a nice radius. So a bit of work, but starts off with a grinder, just making sure everything's clean and tidy so that we can then start coving. We don't need to take much off. We just need to make sure we've got no lumps and bumps, like there's a bit of scratchy glass there and so on. So mainly we just need everything to be nice and smooth so that when we get the fairing compound and start fairing up these corners and getting a nice radius in there, there's nothing that makes bumps and other things happen. Right, ground up. There we go. So every corner now is nice and smooth. Didn't have to take much off, but you can sort of see bits like this where you've got a blip of something. We just need to get rid of that. So um, now we should be able to go through with fairing compound and make a pretty decent curve right the way around those edges. The fairing compound that I'm using is Wattle. It's, a, it's called C-Pro. It's basically a two-part epoxy. So part A, part B. Um, whenever you're doing anything on a boat that involves water, that's like fairing compound that involves water, never ever use anything but epoxy. So polyester and vinyl ester, um, I'm not 100% certain on, on vinyl ester, but polyester is definitely hydroscopic, it starts absorbing water, um, epoxy doesn't. So if you're ever doing anything below the waterline or in a tank, for example, like what we're doing, make sure you're using an epoxy. So it's um, even ratio, so one to one ratio. You do have to be pretty careful to make sure you get the ratios pretty, pretty accurate but pretty accurate is also, that's one. Now I've got to try and judge what that would be if I was to do it again. More. I reckon that's pretty close. That's about the accuracy you need. People will harp on that you need more than that, but I've never ever had any of this stuff not set. When you're mixing two pack, you want to try and fold it into itself. So push the mixtures together rather than like stir it because you just won't mix it if you try and stir it. It takes forever and you still won't get a very good mix. But if you fold it, it takes half the time. Are you looking for even color? My custom coving tool.
I need to let that dry a little bit more. So although it looks like it's lumpy and bumpy and horrible, it is right now, but there is a trick I wanna show you that I use to smooth this stuff out and make it look gorgeous. Let it set up for about maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that, just so that the surface is tacky. Get a bit of soapy water and then run, spray the soapy water over it and then run your finger over and smooth everything down. So if you do that right, it means that you don't have any sanding to do. If you get it wrong, you get a lot of sanding to do. Okay, so it's tacky. It's not fully, fully set. And you can just start to smear this all down. End up with a really beautiful curve. It's probably a touch two set. It's not the end of the world, but this part gets sanded, this part doesn't, because this is all lumpy and bumpy. You just get an angle grinder with a flat disc and just run over that. I just want to make sure these curves and radiuses are really sweet. So with that done around the perimeter, you're left with a really smooth radius. You can sort of see down there, that radius will sand up really beautiful. In order to be able to take the tops of these tanks off and skim it perfectly level across all of the different faces, there's lots of different weird angles going on, I need a laser level, a rotating rotary laser level. I don't have one, I've got one on order, it should be here in a few days, three days, four days, something like that. Um, once we've got that, we can skim the tops off and that allows us to then have the lids aligned perfectly. Awesome, thank you. That's the second tank coved up. It's a windy day, but we do have a full row of trawlers in for the first time in quite a while. Burke's gone through and cleaned up this one here, so he's put a coat of resin on the top. He's also done this one that's up here waiting. So there's two coats on both of those surfaces now of resin. Same with on the underside. Now I need to glass them, so we'll do them tomorrow. Uh, this here has been cleaned up, so if you have a look down close, you can sort of see there's a radius, a nice radius all the way around. What I'll probably do is one coat of resin on that tank on the inside, um, just to make sure we've got a really decent seal of epoxy in there. Also gone through on the outside, any imperfections, um, we've gone through and skimmed them with fairing compound, so that when we give this a final sand and a final glass, and then eventually a final paint, it's looking absolutely beautiful. There we go, number two, cleaned up. These lids have now had two coats of epoxy so that it soaks right into the timber. But before we can put any glass on, we need to buzz down any drips that are left over. So Burke's going around now with a flapper and just cleaning off any of those drips that you can sort of see right on the edges of those plates. So we can put the first layer of glass down. Because we don't need the same level of strength on these lids as we do on the tank itself, it's just literally a flat plate of ply with some glass and epoxy on top. We're using a 450 GSM chop strand mat as opposed to a 450 double bias, which is what we used inside the tank. those lids glass it's now time to go and get the tanks themselves finished so we need to sand the outside make the baffles fiberglass the baffles into the tank and then get the tanks into the engine room and laser level the top so that we can get the lids fitting perfectly while Beck does the um, sanding and getting all of that fairing compound and everything smooth I've got some offcuts and I'm gonna start working on the baffles if you don't know what a baffle is, basically if you have a tank with nothing, like just a completely open tank, 
water can slop from side to side. Now, in a like a normal household tank, like a water storage tank or a storage tank, it's irrelevant because the land and the house never move. Um, however, on boats, they move all the time. And if you don't have anything to slow the water or the liquid down, you get what's called the free surface effect. And basically, water will slosh from one end to the other. It can be really dangerous. It's powerful enough to capsize boats. Many boats have sunk because of it. And there's an incredibly simple way of fixing it. Um, baffles. So basically, what you do is you put essentially a divider, like a like that, basically a barrier that just gets stuck in the middle of the tank. And obviously no water's gonna pass it if it's completely sealed, so you don't seal it off completely. At the bottom, you do great big sort of, you know, reliefs and then a couple of reliefs at the top. And what that allows is liquid to pass slowly. Essentially all it does is slows the liquid down. So you can still drain the tanks and you can still fill them perfectly fine, but they can't get that free surface effect. While we wait for the baffles and the lids to dry, we've got one lid there, one over the back, one baffle there, there's another one tucked around the corner. Gone through and sanded up the front face. So this is the face that you see on this tank and then same deal on this tank here. So that's come out really nice, I'm really happy with that. We'll start getting some paint on these now so that they look absolutely awesome. Um, inside we're not sanding, we don't need to, but we will start, once we've got the baffles soaked up in epoxy, we'll do a couple of layers of epoxy to make sure it's really soaked up on end grains. We'll start glassing those in. We're going to glass those in pretty strong because they are going to take a fair whack of liquid from time to time when the boat's really crashing around. The sides, not so much because the sides have got steel bracing tucked up against them everywhere, so they don't have to support themselves, whereas the baffles do. Because I want these tanks to look amazing when they're sitting in the engine room, we're putting a high build epoxy fairing coat on so that we can sand it back down and get a really amazing finish. Look who's guest starring this week. <laughs> Trish has been helping us decide if we're going to chop holes in these tanks or build them up. So they're getting bolted down in one corner. This one here is already bolted down, but we have a little laser level thing. So 
way this works is you've got a level at the top, you adjust the legs until that's perfectly true. And then you can see the little laser dot thing there. If we can zoom all the way along, it goes right out to that corner. You can see that's the lowest part of the tank. So we basically trim the whole tank down to that lowest part. And um, yeah, there we go. And you can belt it along and get that tank at exactly the same level. So we will be cutting a wee bit off the tops of them, 50 mil, something like that. But we're not losing a huge amount of volume. We calculated it to be about seven and a half liters. So it's actually not that much volume, it's deceptive. So because we need to mark the laser on every surface on the inside, I can't get the laser on the back surface. So by lifting the laser up and then using a marker that's the same marker all the way around the tank, I can just transfer it down. So you can see here I'm lining the laser up with a dot that's on that piece of wood. And there's a line on the bottom and then I just transfer that line across onto the tank. If I do that right the way around the tank, you end up with the same level no matter where you're looking at that tank. So we've tried many times to calculate it and we're just going back to tipping buckets of water in so we can figure out how much volume we've got. Each bucket's nine litres. You can now see how much each tank is going to hold. Water out, time to get these tanks out. We can get them outside and cut them to the level all the way around that we marked on both tanks. We know that they hold, this is the smaller of the two, this one's slightly taller. This is the smaller of the two, holds 360 litres, so they'll both be the same by the time we finish. Now we can um, level them off, get them epoxied up on the tops, and get the lids glassed on, and we can start making these tanks whole. 